In our field, we've been building computers for about 80 years. Think about that. This is the ENIAC. It's the first electronic computer. And even in its day, it was described as a gigantic brain. And since then, computers have gotten faster and faster on a year-after-year -year basis, exponentially. Today, each one of you has the equivalent power of more than 50 million ENIACs in your pocket. It's a mobile phone. And despite all of this, our machines today still are not intelligent. In many ways, modern computing is pretty much the same as it was in 1945. This is a, a modern data center, and, and look at it. It even looks the same. There are cables everywhere. And what I want to focus on is not how they look the same, but how, in some sense, machines are still operating the same way. So our paradigm of computing was invented by Alan Turing. And the way it works is a computer programmer can specify a sequence of instructions. And this is a, a computer program. We do this all the time. And what was special about it, he called it a universal computer, because he was able to prove that for any algorithm, whatever you might imagine, you can specify some sequence of instructions that carries out that task. And so we thought, if we can just keep making computers faster, maybe eventually someone will discover an algorithm for intelligence. Now, with AI, what we're seeing today is that that's not quite the way it works. Instead, somebody shows up, our AI practitioners come with a model, maybe a neural network, and you specify this hypothesis. That's the input to the machine. You then pour a bunch of data over this, and as data fluxes through this model, it, it acts on the parameters of that model to create trained weights. And these weights, the output of the machine, is the equivalent of the computer program. So we're using data and experience to generate the program instead of specifying it by hand. And you can see how this works if we consider how computers have so been used to solve the games of chess and Go. This is Gary Kasparov playing IBM's Deep Blue in 1997. And when IBM solved this game, they, they solved it in the same way that you might solve tic-tac-toe. Uh, so what, what they did is they searched the game tree, and they had a, a group of software and hardware engineers and even Go masters on their team perfecting some rules to say, is this board configuration better or worse than some other board configuration? And then they let it go at the greatest scale they could build at that time. But when they won the match, that machine did little else other than play the game of chess. And in fact, IBM dismantled that machine afterwards because it didn't have any other uses. If you compare this to the recent match of Google's DeepMind team against Lisa Dole playing Go, they did something very different. They used a convolutional neural network and a reinforcement learning setup, and they didn't have a single Go master anywhere on their team. Instead, their software played the game of Go millions of times against itself, and it learned the art of playing Go. And convolutional neural networks, uh, they don't have a single if-then-else statement anywhere in them. It's just a bunch of mathematics. And what, what I think is most special about this is it generalizes. So that team, before they demonstrated Go to the world, showed us convolutional nets and reinforcement learning playing Atari video games like a child might. And convolutional neural networks are also used in image captioning systems. And this is what a CNN had to say about, uh, about Lisa Dole's match. A man is studying a board game. OK, so th this breadth of applicability brings back Alan Turing's original question. Is it possible that a machine built of parts could have the same general intelligence that a person does? And we clearly, in our field, have a long way to go before this might be achieved. But today, the vehicle to explore this question is the graphics processing unit. And this is what most people are using. And so as, as hardware designers, we step back and ask the question, is it possible that a device designed to put pixels on a monitor is the ideal vehicle to explore artificial intelligence? Is, is this the path we should be on? And in truth, it turns out that a GPU is just less bad than a CPU. 
And today, there are over 50 projects in AI hardware, and they're from universities, they're from startups like mine, and from the largest established uh, companies in the industry, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Intel, Alibaba, Tencent. All of these companies have AI hardware plays, and what none of them are doing, no one is reinventing a GPU. Here's why. No matter what retrofits you make to this car, no matter how many exhaust pipes you add to it, or how many engines you, you pile on, it is never going to be able to do the job of driving me from California, my home, here to Beijing. It's just not up to the task. And so it's true with AI as well. You need to fundamentally think of all parts of what you're trying to do and design that into the computer solution. So what might the hardware appliances of tomorrow look like? Well, there are a bunch of really cool and exotic technologies on the hardware horizon. And all of these technologies incorporate some new law of physics into the way that actual computation is performed. And because of that, they're, they're doing some fundamental research. We can expect these things to be on maybe a 10 plus year time frame. So optical computers use the interference patterns of laser light to perform matrix multiplication directly with photons. Quantum computers put particles into a state of superposition to solve uh, combinatorial problems using quantum physics. And neuromorphic designs borrowed straight from biology. They use analog circuits and even crystallization in their manufacture process, making every manufactured device have a unique fingerprint. Our community should, ac should be absolutely excited that people are investing in this, and one day these can become a reality. But as AI practitioners, we must not wait, because AI is happening right now.